Hello, my name is Grayson. Um, I am one of the leaders at the Young Adults Service at Connection Point Church. Um, and with me, I have... I'm Tyke. I am also one of the leaders at the Young Adult Ministry. And I'm Michael. I am the Young Adults Pastor at Connection Point Church. And this is new. <laughs> this is new. This yeah. is the new Young Adults Podcast that we're doing at CPC. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be doing it every week and just kind of going deeper into the message that we have at our young adult service that week. Uh, just giving you guys a little bit more to uh, have throughout the week to dive deeper into what we're talking about. If you guys have questions or things that we hear throughout the week, we'll, we'll try to address those as much as we can uh, here in this setting. But it's just something to give you guys uh, more resources and more things to listen to uh, so that you can grow in your knowledge and, and understanding of, of the Bible and Christ and who Christ has called you to be. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We know sometimes it's hard, especially as a new Christian, to get into a routine of, uh, of reading your Bible, of, of praying, getting alone with God every day. So this, is, this can be an outlet for that. Um, this can, like, like Michael said, answer any of the questions you guys have, uh, but also help you grow in your relationship with God, um, at, at a, at maybe a slower pace, a slower rate, but this will certainly help. I think that's really good. I kind of want to bring that up because I think the young adult age that we have here, um, I, I feel like is a season of busyness. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it is a huge help to just try and sit down, you know, as young adults together, um, and realize that that's a season that most of us are probably in, you know, trying to find our way in the younger age of what's our career going to be, or, you know, the older age, like maybe not married yet, like chasing that, like I need a family still, I'm getting, I'm almost 30, yep. you know? Um, so I think it's, you know, really important to bring that all together. Um, and like you said, like figure out that time to not focus on the busyness of life, but to sit down um, and be still and get in the word and yeah, I th grow yourself. I think that's so that's so important. That's such a good point, Grayson, because one of the things that I have kind of noticed in the young adult age and that I kind of remember from you know my time as a as a young adult. I'm 33 now, so I'm I'm out of the range a little bit, but I remember that time. Um, and I know for me, a lot of the reason that I kind of kept myself busy was because of a lack of direction. I didn't know where right. I was supposed to be going in life or what I needed to be doing. And when I would think about it, I would get overwhelmed and I would be scared because I'm like, yep. where am I? What am I doing? Why am I not where I feel like I need to be? And so I would just try to fill my life and my free time with all these things so that I didn't have to stop and think and worry. So it was just, just like, if I just keep knocking on doors, maybe one will open. If I yeah. just keep going, if I just keep, maybe I'll wind up somewhere good. And really all I wound up with was burnout and being tired and being stressed out and having too many things to do. But I think that, you know, most young adults that I've, that I've talked to about this season of their lives um, kind of fall into that category where they're just throwing stuff at the wall and just trying to get somewhere. And that's, that's kind of the, one of the main points behind the Young Adults Ministry at CPC, um, our entire mission statement um, for this ministry is based out of Ephesians 4.1, where Paul urges us to lead a life that's worthy of our calling. And so my whole purpose here, my, my job here is to help young adults identify what that calling, what that purpose is on their lives that God has given them and then how to walk that out, how to, how to lead a life that is, that is worthy of that calling. That's good. And this is something, this is something that I wish I had right out of high school, yeah, this definitely. ministry, um, because I was, I was like you, Michael, I was throwing myself at everything, you know, trying to figure out my calling. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it led to, I mean, in all reality, if, if I'm being honest, it led to burnout, um, yeah. when I was 20, 21. Um, and so I kind of had to rebuild that and try to, try to figure out exactly what, what God was calling me to, but also try to understand that it, no matter what my calling is, I'm to share Christ with everyone. Absolutely. For those that don't know, he is the associate worship pastor here at Connection Point Church. Um, that also he is. leads the youth and um, does a lot of the setup and tear down and sound for the young adults ministry as well. If he you were does. wondering, 
He does a wonderful job at all those things. And Grayson, I'm just there. Yes. No, yeah. he's 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 one of our interns right now here at, here at Connection Point, and uh, he's finishing up semester two. Um, Woo! Yeah. But say you're interested, or and you've never come to uh, the young adult ministry here at Connection Point, uh, the ages are 18 to 30 at a high school. Um, you now do if have you're to, married, you know, and 30, and your wife is like 32. We're probably not going to kick your wife out. Yes. It's that, definitely more strict on the younger side of things um, than the older. That's one of the questions I get a lot in regards to our young adult ministries. So that, that is a good thing for us to address here. Yes, we do ask that you be out of high school and 18 because we also have an incredible student ministry mm-hmm. here at CPC, and we want you to be a part of that. We don't want to um, – we don't want to – get in the way of that. Like that's an incredible ministry. Pastor Jonathan and his team do an awesome job. Um, there's other reasons as well why we just we just felt as a ministry it would be better to um, start that after you graduate from high school. But as soon as you graduate, you are eligible. You are good. It's awesome. Uh, we want you to be here. Um, but also, yes, on that on the older side of that age range, um, I will never split up a married couple. That's I always want. If you're married, yes, come come to church together. That that's great. And then also, you know, um, with our with our leadership team, um, once you are, I mean, obviously you still have to be 18 and out of high school, but you can be 30 and on our and and serving and still be yes. um, part of our weekly services. Um, and that's just uh, because we don't want we don't want to. Um, turn away people who are hungry for the Lord. Yeah, but there are there are still all of our ministries have different um, rules and policies and things, and those rules and policies are there for a reason. Uh, some of it is security related. Yeah. Some of it is uh, related to that specific ministry for a reason. But all of those things are they they serve a purpose. And if it's ever something that you don't understand or you have questions about. Feel free to reach out to myself, to uh, anyone on our on our leadership team, anyone on staff at our church, and we're always there and open to explain those things and, and why those things are in place. Yeah, and if you're if if you're watching and say say you're the type of person who doesn't want to go to church, you don't like going to to church because it's intimidating. We've purposely designed our young adult service to get away from that intimidation feel of, yes. of church. Uh, we meet inside of the cafe at, at Connection Point Church, and it's it's very intimate. You don't, you're not seen by a ton of people. The lights are very dim. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, we, we have a fairly, I, I don't want to say small group, but uh, we're, we're not huge. When you think about Connection Point, if you know about Connection Point, um, you think very, very large. Um, the young adult ministry is is not that right now we love we'd love to you know be 500 500 young adults here but whatever number we are we're going to strive to make this ministry and and the service that we have not intimidating um because people our age they struggle with that struggle with going into a new environment and um like i said we're going to strive to make that not a problem at our young adult ministry yeah um I just want to piggyback off of that and say, like, everything that we do with this young adults ministry as best we can is intentional. And it's designed um, to impact young adults where they are at in life right now. Um, Because one thing that I don't want to happen is for people to show up and, and hear a message and then leave and not know what to do with it. Um, and I think that's happened to all of us in church, you know, uh, we've all sat somewhere and heard something and, and thought, okay, cool, but how do I apply that to my life on Monday morning? How do I uh, apply that to my life? You know, when I'm at work or when I'm in class or with my parents, how do I apply that? Um, and everything that we try to tackle from, what we what we talk about are our sermon series and things like that um, to the events we do um, are all designed to help you where you're at in life right now. Um, so when I say like our message topics, um, 
whether it's me or it's Tyke or it's anybody else on our, our CPC staff that's speaking, we try to make sure the messages are relevant to what's going on in your lives mm -hmm. at this moment. Um, and then with our events and other things on our calendar, we try to um, deal with other issues you may be facing. Like I know in this age bracket, there's a lot of loneliness there's a lot of feeling like you're not connected to anything or anyone. So we do uh, sometimes just hangout nights. Uh, we'll go to the bowling alley or we'll come to the church and hook up video game systems on the TVs or we'll, we have a Super Bowl party. We'll do all these things to help young adults get connected. We might have to have one of those soon, bro. Fortnite, let me Dude. tell you, bro. They came back with the original map from the beginning. <laughs> oh, it brought the kid out in me, man. I got to tell you, as a 33-year-old man, I have, have no, no idea, idea about. about any of that. <laughs> all right. But we'll have one all if right. you guys want it. And I'll be here and you could tell me all about the Fortnite. You'll love it, man. And I'll be excited. But that's the kind of stuff. The but Fortnite. No, no it, it's been awesome. We've got outside a couple times this year, um, this past weekend, um, to end our last sermon series, which was titled Letters from Paul. Mm -hmm. um, which was super awesome, by the way. I think you did really well with that. Um, but no, to end that whole sermon series, we had a bonfire last night, had a testimony night with a few people, um, just a couple songs, just a quick, intimate, awesome hangout session. Yeah. Um, I don't think it could have gone any better. I think it was super awesome. The weather was perfect. Yeah, it was good. Um, but no, just a good good time of just getting to know other people that you know are in the same position in life as you, more than likely. Yeah, and that's that's really one of the most important elements of our of our young adults ministry is just helping young adults get connected to other young adults that are in the same season of life and get connected ultimately to Jesus yeah. and continue to grow in that relationship with them. I want you guys to know we're not Michael Michael is not preaching out of a or speaking out of out of like authority. The things that we talk about at our, at our young adult ministry are things that you know Michael has struggled with. I'm I'm going to be speaking here at the end of the month. Um, that's going to I'm going to be speaking on something that I have struggled with. We don't speak out of uh, authority, like I said. We speak out of out of experience. Yeah. Um, so I want you guys to know that the things that we talk about are things that we've struggled with ourselves, and we're trying to help you with that's that. Good. Yeah, because. Um I say this a lot in our services. Um, sometimes I think part of the reason that people struggle to get connected um, in church is because we kind of have this weird way of thinking that whoever you see on stage with a microphone is perfect. Mm. That person is up there because they have achieved some level of Christianity that makes them completely just impervious to anything almost start to idolize that person as well yes you know? yes it becomes this kind of like oh I, I can't be like pastor whoever or this person on the worship team uh, you know so and then that um whether you realize it or not at the time it starts to make you feel discouraged yeah. like you can't ever make it to this level mm -hmm. and that's just that's why that's such an unhealthy way of thinking because number one it discourages you and number two it's it's not true. Right. It doesn't matter where you're at, whatever church you're at on any Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whatever. Nobody on that platform is perfect. Right. Yep. Nobody in that room is perfect. And I am, I am right there. Like you there's, should there's, definitely never expect them to be perfect yeah. either. You know? And so, so I do um, try to communicate um, my flaws Yes. Um, whenever, whenever we're discussing things, uh, and so some of it, it's like sometimes there are things that are like I've I've gotten pretty decent at this, and I can kind of speak to how to deal. But sometimes I, it is like no, this is something I've I've struggled with, or am struggling with, or have struggled with. Mm -hmm. I I can connect to this, and you know sometimes I think it's it's even more healthy to let people know. No, I've messed this up too. You know, because it helps people understand that, like, if, if God can still use this guy, mm -hmm. God can still use this girl. If God can still, then he can use me. And that's what I, that's, that's our, our hope is that we're constantly pointing our, our young adults yeah. to the goodness of God yes. and the mercy that he has for all of us. Yes. As someone on, on a platform often, I don't like when people want to be like me because I see my flaws mm -hmm. when I'm on a platform of course, people aren't necessarily seeing my flaws. They aren't seeing where I struggle, where I sin. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't 
like I said, I don't want people to be like me. I'm striving to be like Christ. And I wish people would say, oh, I want to, I want, I want to sing like you, or, uh, I want to, I want to play guitar, play piano like you. I wish they wouldn't say that. I wish they would say, I want to use my gifts for yeah. God. Like you use your gifts for God. Yeah. Something really weird. Um, I think we've talked about before, but I used to love the platform, right? Like the spotlight, like I wanted it, right? Like in the game, I want the ball a hundred percent, like all eyes on me. I want to make this, you know, um, since church and being involved, like what I did last night, like I was one of the people that gave their testimony. Like I hated it. A hundred percent hated it in the moment. Like I was good, you know, like, but I didn't look up. Like I literally think I looked at the gravel the whole time. And I was thinking that in the middle of, it, I was like, I don't think I've made eye contact with one person <laughs> until I mentioned someone's name that was out there. Joey. I think I looked at him cause I was comfortable with that. And then like, look straight back down. Mm-hmm. And like I was telling Amber, she was like, you nervous? And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, Let's run it, you know? But then the second that microphone was on its way to me, like, boom, heart was just going crazy. Mm. So I think that's really weird that the Lord has switched me in that um, because I'm totally not comfortable with it. Um, maybe you can touch on maybe why that is. I have no idea. Like, it's really it's really weird for me to even comprehend. Cause like, used to be, like, I want to be the guy that does all of it. Yeah. Now it's like, I like being in my corner, you know, helping out but not being the face of something going on. Yeah, and and I think what's happening is that's an example of the growth that Jesus takes us through whenever we um, accept him and enter into a relationship with him and and we commit ourselves to growing and learning in that relationship. That's an example of of what that growth brings. Um, He takes the the nastiness that's in our heart for lack of a better way to put it mm-hmm. and, and he begins to change those things because what you, you what you were describing before in that situation is pride right to be honest it, there, there there's a pride to that when mm-hmm. it's always look at me and you're you're pounding your chest and I'm the man right you know there there's there's pride to that because you want the the um the, the attention the, the glory on you um but much like I even mentioned this last night, I got up and, and, and spoke for a bit and I talked about um, John the Baptist, who um, his entire his entire mission was to point to Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, before before, um, you know, early in his in his uh, ministry, he would he would baptize people and he would pray for people and he would speak. But he would always say the one who's coming later is greater than me. He, I baptize with water. He baptizes with fire. He described himself as a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way for the Lord is coming. And when we live our lives solely, completely devoted to Christ, um, you may struggle with pride at times, but when your eyes are focused on Jesus like they should be, um, you'll feel that humility and you'll feel that um, it's not about me. Yeah, it's not about me. I need to be pointing to him. And so I think um, what you're experiencing and what you're going through, and I and I feel like I can say this because I, I know you and I I know a bit of who you were before, and I've seen um, what God has been doing in your life in a lot of ways. I've seen a lot of examples in that, and I know we mess with each other a lot. You're my boy, but at the end of the day, the the, the truth is you are growing. Yeah, God is doing something incredible in you. And I can see that that humility beginning to shine through. Good. As you can see, we have real conversations here, <laughs> the adult, here at the Young Adult Ministry. Yeah, that Not wasn't scripted. planned. That just kind of happened. No. Yes. So I say we wrap it up here, but we are getting ready to start a new message series, Michael. We are. If you want to introduce that. Yes. We will be um, the next few weeks diving into topics like Dating, relationships, lust, sex. The DMs. The yeah, DMs. we're, we're going to talk about those things. And there's a reason for that. Like we said, um, we want to help you guys in the season that you're in right now. And in our young adults ministry, uh, we have the entire spectrum of of relationships we have people that are single we have people that are dating we have people that are engaged we have people that are married with children and and so uh this this 
series is going to look at those relationships and how do we honor God in all um, all sections of that, whether you're single or dating or engaged or married, how do we honor God in those relationships? Uh, because I believe that at this age, especially, it, it can be a struggle. It can be a struggle. There's a lot of uh, temptation um, surrounding that for a lot of people. So we're going to look at how do we attack this from a from a biblical standpoint? Because at the end of the day, that's what we want for you guys, to be able to look at the issues in your life from a biblical standpoint, not what Pastor Michael just thinks or not what Tyke just thinks or not Grayson or any of our other leaders, but what does the Bible say about this? How do I apply that to my life? And how do I live the best life that I can for Jesus in the season that I am right now? So we will be talking about that um, through the month of November and a little bit into into December as well. Yes. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please share the podcast to uh, as, as many as many people as you possibly can. Um, you know, our goal is to to share Christ with others, and uh, just sh- pressing that share button does that. Um, we would love to see you on Sundays uh, from 6.30. Doors open at 6.30. Mm-hmm. Services from 7 to 8. We'd love to see you here at the Young Adult Ministry at Connection Point. And we will wrap it up there. All right. See ya. See you Sunday.